Вітання усім. Greetings to everyone, to all who are watching us online. The first briefing today is on the analysis of human rights violations in the occupied Crimea in the first quarter of 2018. We have the guest is Kandar Bariyev, member of the Majlis of the Crimean Tata People, chairman of the board of the Crimean Tata Resource Center, and Elvira Sagirman, communications manager of the Crimean Tata Resource Center. Rifat Chubarov, unfortunately, could not join us. Uh, Mr. Bariyev, uh, good morning. Thank you. We would like to thank you for coming to our press conference. We would like to make a presentation on the um, violations of human rights in uh, uh, Crimea in the first quarter of 2018. Mr. Chubarov called right now. There's now an issue about signing an agreement that he physically cannot join us here today. So uh, we agreed that we will continue our press conference uh, and um, I believe that we will uh, try to provide the information which will be very important for Ukrainian society, for the international community, and that's on what is happening in Crimea in reality. Now I would like to request you to show this slide so that it's uh, clear. Crimean Tata uh, Resource Center of Majlis of the Crimean Tata people on a monthly basis is making monthly analysis, but we are not uh, organizing monthly a press conference. We publish the information on our website, but quarterly we are planning to provide the information uh, to see the dynamics, what's happening. These uh, uh, days, uh, yesterday, basically, there was the so-called inauguration of the President Putin, and uh, it's clear that we are all concerned uh, with what will be happening after Putin uh, has uh, uh, become the fourth time uh, the president uh, and uh, will be the president for the next six years. So we hope that Putin will be strengthening repressions uh, in general in uh, Russia and, uh, of course, uh, uh, on the occup it will be difficult on occupied territories because Putin will be trying to show the force. He will be trying to demonstrate uh, that he's uh, fighting with those who think differently. Uh, he's fighting some uh, extremist uh, um, uh, signs, and I believe that the victims will be the activists, uh, Crimean Tata and Ukrainian on the occupied territories, first of all in Crimea, in order to adequately react uh, to such uh, uh, repressions. Uh, we need, first of all, to quite actively and systematically uh, conduct monitoring of the violations uh, of human rights happening in Crimea, and we need to collect all the facts and the evidence to present it to the international community so that such evidence could be then used uh, when uh, the uh, competent uh, bodies of Ukraine and the international competent bodies uh, participate in that uh, so that we can demonstrate uh, clearly the violations of human rights in Crimea. Now, uh, talking about the analysis uh, of the violations of human rights in Crimea, before we start showing the graphs to you, I would like to say that during the first three months, the occupants uh, conducted 19 uh, searches. Uh, Twelve of them were in the houses of the indigenous people. Twenty-eight people were detained. There were 40 uh, cases of illegal interrogations uh, uh, registered. Twenty-two of them were the interrogations of Crimea and Tata people uh, in the first quarter of 2018, the total amount of pe fines was 30, 339,500 rubles. 
which is approximately 145,000 grievances. Uh, there were registered 170 cases of violation of right for the just court, 149 of them are against the indigenous people, 17 uh, uh, Two, two cases of violation of the rights for peaceful meetings, 26 meetings of illegal visits to occupied K uh, Crimea, 29 facts of uh, illegal military trainings on the occupied territory. We will show you the graphs and I would like to remind you that this is the data for the first three months. It's clear that we also have the presentation for April. If we have some time left, we will try to show you the events taking place in April, especially because we see new trends uh, in April. Now we will show you uh, the slides and uh, uh, the slides will um, be um, explained. The presentation is divided into two sections. The first one is a violation of the right for uh, freedom, life, uh, and the second one is violation of main freedoms. The first slide, the, the number of searches, the total number is 19, 12 of them are in the houses of Crimean Tatars. Based on this graph, we can mentioned that the searches and other repressive actions are of systemic nature. Before the elections and after the elections, the searches uh, uh, were conducted uh, in 19 houses, 12 in the houses of Crimean Tatars. In January, there were nine searches uh, in the homes, uh, uh, houses of Crimean Tatars, and they were uh, related uh, to sort of dissemination by activists of extremist uh, materials. We see that despite the fact that these uh, are sort of administrative violations, like uh, uh, posting and social networks or maybe some audio recording in the mm, social network which are uh, considered by the Russian authorities as extremist materials. We see the actions which are very rude. In February there were three searches. Uh, uh, after them there were illegal detentions. In March we see some new trends. Uh, and we see that that continues, uh, that, that these are searches in houses of light, uh, uh, left activists uh, and anarchists, and that was in Simferopol and Sivastopol. Uh, the physical force was uh, applied uh, and the people were detained, and this was happening with uh, very rude uh, violations. Uh, the detentions. In the first quarter of 2018, we registered 28 detentions. Half of them were the detentions of the representatives of Crimean Tatars. Most of them were conducted after searches. Uh, and uh, I mentioned that that uh, is despite uh, any violations, any violation of an article of Russian, even Russian legislation, the law enforcement representatives detain the representatives of the indigenous, uh, representatives of the indigenous people, and then they uh, fine. The occupants illegally detain the representatives of the indigenous Crimean Tatar people, pro-Ukrainian activists, and left uh, activists, anarchists. Uh, there were uh, registered cases of detentions at the administrative border with the uh, temporary occupied Crimea. <coughs> We remember how young people were detained and physical physical force was applied against them. We remember how young representative of Crimean Tatars, uh, Crimean Tatar was detained and he uh, uh, and there was physical violation applied uh, in January. There were five detentions registered in February 13 and in March 10. It will be interesting to follow these trends in the future because in March there were so-called elections on the territory of the occupied Crimea and it's interesting to follow how uh, 
events, uh, uh, what's happening before the elections and after. Now the interrogations, um, the next category, and warnings uh, from the occupational authorities. Uh, we put these two categories together. Interrogation is when they are invited, when people are invited into the investigatory body, but also we combine these categories because we believe that many of people who, rece who received warnings, they are invited uh, to the investigatory committee or such warnings uh, are, submi uh, are submitted uh, close to their place of work or where they live. Uh, the total number of the interrogations is 40. The interrogations of Crimean Tatars 22 in the first quarter. Uh, well, 22 are the representatives of Crimean Tatars. Uh, mostly the occupants were interrogating people after the searches in their homes. Uh, also participants of Ukrainian Cultural Center in Crimea and uh, participants of Russian music group Pussy Riot were also interrogated. Uh, the group Pussy Riot uh, we consider to be violators who illegally visited the Crimea because they had to receive the permit from Ukraine. But still we see uh, we included uh, this group into that uh, statistical data because the occupational authorities conducted such actions against them. The next slide is about arrests. Uh, the total number of arrests is 39 and 28 uh, um, the arrests of Crimean Tatars. 39, that's, uh, these are not all new arrests. We included into that category the extension of the term uh, of the arrest um, uh, against people who are already uh, arrested um, and also we mean some new arrests that's when people were detained after searches and then they uh, so in January uh, the Ukrainian activist Vladimir Baluch was uh, sentenced to three uh, years and seven months of uh, the colony settlement. We see the sentence uh, against Vladimir Baluch, three Crimean Tatars, Giray Kulamieta, Vesmail Ramazanov, and, and Verkrosh. They were. Uh, Oh, they, they were um, arrested uh, for their posts in social networks. Um, Lifortova Court of Moscow arrested for two months the citizen of Ukraine, Konstantin Davidenko, who was detained um, because he was suspected in espionage. Uh, Davidenko, that's a new arrest, uh, and he. Uh, is uh, in CISO in, uh, Lef in the detention facility in Lefortov. Also, the Supreme Court of Crimea sentenced uh, Andrei Zakhte to six and a half years uh, of detention. Kiev uh, District Court, uh, so called Court of Simferopol, arrested the activist of uh, Fazila Bragimov in March. Alexei Shostakovich and Ivan Markov were arrested for 10 days uh, for sort of dissemination of extra materials and social networks. The mm, journalist Nariman Mehmedeminov was arrested till the 16th of May. Besides that, the occupational courts of Crimea regularly uh, extend the terms of detention uh, of uh, uh, the political um, detainees. Uh, the next slide is fines, uh, and that is after the people are arrested or detained, they are fined. The total amount of uh, the fines uh, for the first quarter was 30, 339,500 rubles, which is 143 and a half approximately thousand grivnas. Uh, 
uh, the Ukrainian activist uh, and political uh, detainee Vladimir Balu, Kremlin Tatas, Kemal Sintyayev, uh, Ibazer Islamov, uh, were fined for their posts in social networks, and also the citizen of Kerch, who, according to FSB, was detained uh, uh, in uh, um, russophobic um, expressions in the internet. So they are um, also in the first quarter of 2018, the citizen of Crimea was fined for using uh, the drone. And the biggest fine for the first quarter of 2018 was the fine uh, uh, that uh, um, Akhtayev, uh, um, uh, Andrei Zakhtay uh, had to pay, and that was 220,000 rubles. Also, the English journalist Madeline Roach was fined, uh, and the fine was 4,000 rubles. We believe that she is also one of the persons who illegally visited the territory of Crimea. Also, the um, Simferopol scored the fine fear of Abdullah, the wife of uh, uh, his boot uh, Tahrir Uzair Abdullah, uh, and the fine was 500 rubles because uh, uh, we see how occupational courts of Crimea uh, uh, take uh, to uh, court uh, the um, Houses uh, of the arrested people, and we see these fines to uh, um, that are issued to wives, and this way they are trying to um, uh, affect uh, the whole nation. Violation of right for the just. Uh, uh, court. Uh, we see that the total number of violations in three months is 170. Most of them are um, the violation of that right uh, in respect to the representatives of Crimean Tatars. Uh, we see the trend which uh, has become regular. Occupational courts of, uh, Crime of Crimea illegally extend the terms of detention and they issue non-objective verdicts uh, against Crimean Tatar and Ukrainian activists. That right was violated uh, in uh, respect to uh, the um, participants of the case of Hizbut Tahrir, case of Veji Yakashka, 26, uh, case of 26 of February, and the case of Ukrainian um, diversive uh, um, uh, uh, activists, uh, and this way they violate the right not just for uh, just uh, jurisdiction, but for freedom of movement. The next one is violating of right for the highest achievable level of physical and psych psychic health. Uh, this is done against uh, uh, Vladimir Baluchev and Vijay Kashka. Bikir Dekirmidji has pneumonia, and Kazim Ametov uh, has high uh, um, uh, blood pressure, and his uh, vision deteriorated. There were cases registered of beating political detainee Vadim Siruk and activist Ismail Ramazanov. Also, the um, Crimean activist Efremov was tortured, as well as Evgeny Karakashev and Alexei Shostakovich, as well as young Crimean Tatars Abdullah Ibrahimov, and Fakhri Muratov in January, Siran Salib and Sirver Zekiryaev were forcefully put to the uh, hospital for a psychiatric expert analysis. Uh, some people um, attacked the Crimean Tata family in order to rob them, and that was in March. If we look at this graph, we see that the total number of registered violations 
is 17 and in respect to indigenous Crimean Tatar people, 12. I would like also to mention the case uh, uh, about non uh, providing adequate uh, medical assistance to political detainee Uzira Blay. Uzira Blay was uh, in February in the hospital in Simferopol. Uh, the medical assistance was uh, rendered to him and uh, uh, they uh, made the surgery of his uh, shoulder, but the medical treatment was not finished, and now we would like to express our gratitude to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, to international community, to different embassies who reacted. And uh, even though Russian Federation demonstrated a certain process of uh, conducting uh, um, uh, examination. Um, he was taken to vascular department and after examination he was again sent to detention facility, to medical unit of detention facility, but uh, uh, Uzir Abdullah needs to be hospitalized because he has diabetes. And besides, because there are all the symptoms which could which uh, uh, allow us to judge uh, that the pro that that he has uh, some bacterial infection, uh, we see that um, uh, he uh, has swallowed the uh, leg and he has uh, a high temperature. And in this case, we believe that Uzir Abdullayev has to stay in the hospital and get adequate treatment, medical treatment. The next violation is violation of the right for peaceful meetings and gatherings. You can see that the total number of violations uh, uh, is two, and uh, both of them uh, uh, and both of them uh, were um, against the Crimean Tatar activists. On the 27th of January in Sudak, Russian law enforcement uh, uh, enforcement uh, units uh, interrupted the meeting of Crimean Solidarity. That's the movement where the parents, uh, wives, uh, and the uh, children of political detainees uh, are getting together to discuss how to help their children or um, their uh, spouses. Uh, this day, the representatives of the police uh, referred to the information that there is a probability of detection of uh, weapons, and they uh, um, registered all the passport data of all those people who were present there, and that is, uh, they did it to uh, basically control such people. All these activists were photographed. The next case on the 25th of February, the Crimean Tata, uh, Elmaza Kimava, uh, went to single PK against the so-called, uh, or I would say, illegal restoration of Khan's palace in Bakhchisarai. Any restorations, any excavations are to be taking place only uh, if approved by the competent bodies of Ukraine. So all these actions are illegal. Besides our activists, uh, detected and they are uh, and they are monitoring the violations uh, of the rules uh, of conducting restoration where they violate authentic where they um, basically um, disrupt uh, uh, some of the authentic um, uh, um, things. The next graph, illegal visit to Crimea and uh, 
deportation from Crimea. In the first quarter, there were 26 cases of illegal visits to Crimea in February 6. As we've mentioned, uh, that was the journalist from England, Madeleine Roach, and participants of Russian music group Pussy Riot. And they violated the Ukrainian legislation and visited the territory of temporarily occupied Crimea. And also in the first quarter, uh, two members uh, of party Alternative Germany uh, visited uh, Crimea from the 1st February to the 1st of March. Uh, there were registered uh, uh, 20 vessels, uh, violators, uh, that uh, entered the waters of uh, Crimea. Also, according to Krim Inform, Yevpatoria City Court uh, uh, deport, depart, deported uh, from occupied Crimea for so-called illegal um, work, 23 citizens of Ukraine, besides the Central District Court of Simferopol deported from Crimea, the English journalist Madeleine Roach, uh, we understand that she illegally uh, visited Crimea, but she was then exiled. Uh, expelled from Crimea. The next one is uh, regular illegal military trainings in Crimea, and that is violation of all the international norms, uh, the Fourth uh, Geneva uh, Convention and uh, the UN Declaration. There were nine of such violations. We will not be talking about all the facts. We uh, here indicate the numbers uh, of the military equipment of uh, the servicemen. These are the facts which are regular, systemic, uh, and uh, after occupation of Crimea this has become uh, massive. Such illegal military trainings violate uh, that they destruct uh, the mm, destroy uh, the uh, ecosystem of Crimea that was mentioned at the UN Forum uh, uh, this year. Uh, this forum was specialized on the topic of violation of rights for natural resources, for environment, and um, these facts um, Uh, the next fact is illegal elections of the president in occupied Crimea. Uh, this violation uh, is the violation of Ukrainian legislation, the violation of international law, and the violation of Russian legislation, because um, mm, the fact uh, that Putin uh, uh, was uh, uh, elected uh, uh, Twice, uh, the basically um, the, um, the president cannot serve more than two terms. But we saw yesterday the chairman of the Constitutional Court, Valery Zorkin, participated in the inauguration, even though he understands that they are violating their own constitution. As part of that process, uh, there were the threats, uh, and uh, um, also they were trying to attract people to the um, uh, election process and there were cases registered uh, when a woman who refused to vote, uh, she was in the hospital, she was uh, um, she, she had to leave the hospital next day. The next one is illegal restoration of Khan's palace in occupied Bakhchisarai. I just want to say that in all the first quarter of 20. 18, the process has been continuing, and it's very important for us that there is uh, the reaction of the international community, and it is important uh, that the competent bodies um, 
of Ukraine talk about that. Uh, we uh, collected, uh, we, we uh, gathered all these uh, materials thanks to our activist text to mass media and monitoring of the mass media and the local uh, people in occupied Crimea and um, also thanks to our colleagues uh, and uh, um, we are conducting um, discussions um, we cannot say that we covered all the facts um, uh, of violation of human rights in occupied Crimea, but we are trying to register uh, all of that. Uh, and I believe that such work is what is needed uh, so that international uh, community can uh, uh, really uh, register all these violations. Uh, now we have time for uh, questions. If you have questions, please ask. Eduard Krzyżanowski, Channel 24. You probably heard this question many times. Uh, till when uh, the Crimean Tatars and pro-Ukrainian activists will be persecuted in Crimea? And why is Russia persecuting Crimean Tatars? and pro-Ukrainian activists. The persecution of Crimean Tatar people and uh, Ukrainian activists will last till Crimea is deoccupied. We mentioned that publicly many times and there was an initiative. We're working on that and that's the initiative of the international uh, campaign Liberate Crimea. And this initiative is not the alternative uh, for the uh, campaign Crimea is Ukraine. This is the initiative which is the continuation of this initiative. So we today are working actively on uh, uh, having the network uh, of activists all over the world so that we can uh, systemically conduct international campaigns and remind the international community uh, that immediately after the occupation, uh, starting from February of 2014, the mass repression started against uh, indigenous Crimean Tatar people, Ukrainians and representatives of other nationalities who reside in Crimea and disagree with what is uh, uh, what the occupation authorities are doing. ATR channel tell about uh, uh, Vladimir Baloch, what's the situation now, and uh, Mr. Risuli Ililayev. Risuli Ililayev, we mentioned that we have the analysis for April that happened in April this year, and we saw some new trends, even though we saw that periodically in 2014-2015 when there was a pressure against entrepreneurs. But the situation with Ilayev, when we saw mass uh, searches on 33 uh, premises or, or uh, facilities, then we saw the detention uh, during the night. Uh, Isur Liliaev and Ali Bariyev uh, uh, were put into Lefortava detention facility. We understand that that the detention facility is the detention facility of the FSB, and there are people there uh, who are. Um, uh, uh, they are because of uh, the accusation in terrorism and uh, high treason and espionage. That is why we do not understand how with the Article 238, Part 2, uh, Item A, when it's about sort of sale of uh, bad quality products, uh, they are put within one night to Moscow to Lefortava detention facility. We see some other trends here. We see the trends of the pressure against business uh, 
uh, on business of uh, indigenous people. Ililayev is uh, uh, did not participate in political processes. Uh, we consider that that is the pressure uh, on uh, social economic. Uh, uh, conditions uh, of uh, representatives of um, indigenous people and Ukrainian activists so that people have to leave Crimea. It's about thousands of people, uh, those who work in companies, Krimopt and other uh, companies that are owned by Ililayev, and it's about dozens of thousands of entrepreneurs, representatives of small and medium-sized business who were buying goods, uh, and creating jobs and we're feeding their families. I can say that in most cases, Crimean Tatars do not work in the system of municipal authorities or state authorities uh, of occupants and to feed their families, they work in private business. They create their own business. And uh, uh, we can say that today, in accordance with the changes uh, in the legislation of Russian Federation, they increase the um, rates. Uh, these are the processes uh, which are against small and medium-sized business in Russia and in Crimea. I believe that the situation with Ililayev is al means also the pressure on the identity of Crimean Tatar people because Ililayev is one of the entrepreneurs. He is also the donator in 2007. He set up the uh, foundation named after Chuban Zadeh. He was doing everything to uh, uh, he, he built the uh, mosque, he allocated the money for uh, building Christian cathedrals in Belogorsk. He made a monument to Urslan Zadeh and he also was giving money for researches of culture, language and history of indigenous Crimean Tatar people. But seeing the processes uh, uh, seeing, looking at what's happening, that the history of Crimea is being rewritten, and uh, um, we see that the occupational authorities uh, are striking against um, uh, development and financing of the humanitarian uh, sphere. And also, I believe that um, the continuation of uh, intimidation of the population of Crimea, of Crimean Tatars in particular, because the entrepreneurs uh, who in most cases are apolitical, they start thinking about what could happen with each one of them. Because Rasul Ililayev is uh, an example of uh, the fact that occupational machine will not stop uh, um, and will uh, be continuing the repressions. I would like to add, as to Vladimir Balakh, as of the 1st of May, uh, he uh, was uh, the 44th day uh, uh, in starvation. The, we know the cases when the administration of the detention facility was not allowing the lawyer to visit um, the detainee. And, um, and so we know of cases when he was not given any water and the doctors are not allowed uh, to see him because they say that his health is not that critical. And uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs made the statement that the Ukrainian doctors are to be allowed to visit him. And the U.S. also expressed their concern as to the state of his health. This in, uh, situation is to be under control so that Russia provides medical assistance to him. And, li and freeze them. And we would like to thank the State Department of the U.S. who reacted to the situation with Baluch because such statements are very important. They're important because uh, 
the people working in detention facility in the FSB, they react to such processes, and that is important so that uh, the tortures are not conducted against political uh, detainees. Um, the next question. Once there are no more questions, thank you. And uh, if you have any more questions, I agree that the speakers will answer them later. Thank you.